But listen to this. In the book of James, it says in chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, it says here, um, Are there any sick among you? Then ask the elders of the church to come and pray over the sick and anoint them with oil in the name of our Lord. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. If they've committed sins, they will be forgiven. So, but um, I really wanted to, this verse, verse the verse before that. But anyway, you have to repent first, all right? And so, but you have to, look, you know, again, sometimes, and honestly, honestly, hear what I'm saying. Just because you're sick, I'm not saying now you have an awe in your heart. But if there is something that's there that could be hindering healing in any dimension, ask Holy Spirit to uproot it, to show you. How many times have we ministered to people that got healing that hadn't thought of something that happened gazillion years ago, and the Lord brings it up, I'm like, holy mackerel, I totally forgot about that. But that was something that has caused such judgment and such anger in hearts, right? We all have had that. I mean, none of us have lived a perfect life. But it's like the enemy will put, you know, things in your, ma in your mind and think it's because of that person. Uh-uh. It is not. Let's check. Why are you so sensitive? Why are you getting so angry and so hurt? Then that means there's something here. Check it out and find out why are you so sensitive about an issue? Why are you getting so offended, so hurt? Now, again, you know, I get there's a fine balance, but if that's your go-to and you automatically are cutting people off and, you know, this isn't working and, you know, I'm offended, this one didn't say hello to me and I'm offended. We've all been there. But then you have to mature and grow up. That's where we wake up. In Luke 10, 19, it says, listen carefully. I have given you authority that you now possess. Listen, you have it, but he doesn't want you to know it. You have it. To tread on serpents and scorpions and the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy, Satan, and nothing in any way will harm you. He's given us great authority. Matthew 16, 18 through 19, I'm getting to the python. Jesus came back and said, God bless you, Simon, son of jo uh, Jonah. It's in the message. You didn't get that answer out of books or from teachers. My father in heaven, God himself, let you in on a secret of who I really am. And now I'm going to tell you who you really are, Peter. You are a rock. This is the rock on which I put together my church, a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. No matter what the world's trying to do, no matter what the government's trying to do, the church will remain. We're, and by the way, we're the church, just saying. And that's not all. You have complete and free access to God's kingdom, keys to any and every door, no more barriers between heaven and earth and earth on, and heaven. A, a yes on earth is a yes in heaven, right? That's where I bind. And a, and a new on earth... Um, a no on earth is a no in heaven, you know, binding and loosing. Now, we were in Israel, and one of the things that, uh, one of the places we went to was where Pan, we were in Caesarea Philippi, and one of the things about, when you, when you hear about gates and city, it's a, def a city's defense, right? And so, when we talk about, like, even where we possess the gates of our enemy, it means to conquer. It means to conquer our enemy. And so, you know, he said the gates of hell will not prevail. He's, he's, we're on the offensive. We're not on the defensive. He's called us to overthrow the works of the enemy, right? I know, I'm hot. I know you're hot. The fire of God's just coming out, right? Is that what it is? I know, I'm hot too. So, no, no, it's the fire of God. When the gates of the city were breached, the attacking army won, right? So that's who we are. We are the ecclesia. We're that legislative body. But now the beauty of it is what I loved about where Jesus had them, all the disciples go. We've been there. And it's where they worship the God of Pan, all right? And it was, in, so this is what it said in, in the um, commentary. It says the, that um, the church would be built on the rock of Caesarea Philippi, where and it was filled with Pagan idols where ungodly beliefs and values dominated. And, and that's where we crush that. It says here that the Canaanites worshipped this god. It was deeply occultic and superstitious. Described Mount Hermon as the realm of the dead. It was a place where deep idol worship of orgies, of strange occult rituals, and even human sacrifice. That city was built on that rock formation and it was nestled up against a cliff known as the Rock of the Gods. 
And many shrines were carved into that mountainside. And they actually believed it was a gateway to the place of the dead. And, they, and that's where they practiced human sacrifice. And, it's a, and so I want you to understand that it was a regional cap, capital for idolatry and false religion, witchcraft and paganism. And so Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. It, he intentionally was there. He knew all the nonsense that's going on with all the occultism, Satanism, wokeism, he, you know, cancel culture. He knew all that. And he said the gates of hell will not prevail against the ecclesia, against the church, against the called out ones, the ones who know who they are in Christ, the ones who know the name of Jesus and know our authority, the ones who are in intimate relationship that will call those things as being not as though they are. Push back the enemy. That that's who we are. That's who God says. And he says here in Matthew 18, in 18, it says, I assure you, most solemnly say to you, whatever you bind, whatever you forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, shall have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose, whatever you permit, see, we have that authority. Declare lawful on earth shall already have been loosed in heaven. And so we have to confess and, and acknowledge, you know, that, that Lord God, we are these people and the enemy's trying to shut our mouths. He's trying to say, your prayers don't make a difference. Why bother? Oh, it's so boring to pray. How many have ever felt that without a show of hands? It's so boring to pray. Oh my God. It's like pulling teeth. That's because he wants that because he knows it destroys him. He knows we get revelation. He knows the power of God is in us. We have the DNA of Christ Jesus in us. Remember, Papa eating his spinach. You know, you got, you're all buff. You got a six pack when you're in the presence of the Lord. That's who we are. And then we have the angels that he sends around us. You know, the angels of the Lord that go before us in our rear guard, they're with us. We have our guardian angels. They're here with us. Open our eyes, Lord, that we will see and hear in ways that we haven't seen before. That's what Holy Spirit's saying to us. His power is limited. We're not because we have the unlimited one that we serve.